war and NATO is a break. Western sanctions, energy, the absent sanctions. behind President Erdogan. It's related to the energy. The power of the system is called the Defense Production Act. Well, it's happened. Mediscope English is up and running. And for not a lack of trying, this is going to be a little short and sweet intro. I'm joined by Mehmet Sanverdi and Elishin Elichin, and I am Murat Tursan. You might know Shin, you might know me. This is Mehmet's first time on camera, and I brought him here kicking and screaming, so please be nice to him. I'll tell you a little bit about Mediscope English. To start, why we're doing this. Now, a long, long time ago in an office far, far away, a man by the name of Rushan Chekhar started an independent media organization in a country that jails journalists like it's going out of style. Whether or not if that was a smart idea, Mediascope was born. Independent news organizations in Turkey are kind of tough to come by, so this little engine that could was chugging along by the skin of his teeth for a little while. Well, now that Mediascope is a little bit more established, and they have the likes of me, Ushan, Mehmet. We'd like to introduce the happenings in Turkey to a broader audience. If you are not from Turkey, or you've only ever vaguely heard of Turkey, and or you can't really point out Turkey on a map to begin with, you might be asking yourself, why should I care? Well, because Turkey is kind of crazy. <laughs> Turkish politics are out of this world. Corruption scandals and all-around daily happenings are like an over-the-top cartoon. The economy is a cautionary tale. But most of all, by some grace of God, Turkey has become kind of a major player on the world stage. And what happens here might end up trickling onto you. Say you're from Europe. Did you know that Turkey hosts over 4 million refugees and from the Middle East and elsewhere? And President Erdogan threatens to release them onto Europe if he doesn't get his way. Or maybe you're from the United States. Did you know that the Biden administration has been trying to sell F-16s to Turkey despite congressional objections? Or that Turkey was stonewalling Finland and Sweden's NATO, in, sorry, entry into NATO? Well, all of this and more, along with daily headlines, explainers, and all-around NATO content coming your way in the upcoming days. Because English reporting from Turkey usually comes from the Turkish government or government-aligned media outlets, and they're usually perhaps a little too kind. Well, we are here to offer a bit more objective news and cover things from a perspective that you might not typically get from the big name outlets. And if you yourself would like to contribute, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let us know what you would like to see covered. And don't forget to like and subscribe. But without further ado, I will now shut up and introduce Lushin Elichin. Lushin. Hi, dear. Hi. Uh, well, what should I say? I've been covering... Introduce yourself. Okay, I've been covering uh, news for almost 30 years now. Okay. Uh, that means I started journalism when I was six. Don't forget that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I remember you. Okay. We went to kindergarten together. Okay. And, um, you know, I've been a contributor uh, to Mediascope since its first launch. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so happy to be uh, among these wonderful guys here. Uh, what can I say? It's very important timing that we choose mm -hmm. to launch this English uh, outlet. Why? Because it's uh, there's a very important, very consequential elections are coming, as you know, and maybe as you as well know. And so it's very important to get out uh objective news and I think this um, till the election day maybe even after that we will be having crazy things happening in Turkey maybe I'm talking very jokingly you know but but no we're, we are not joking <laughs> yeah. Turkey is crazy right. crazy things just, happen just this week a mob boss who was connected to the government became a whistleblower and after I don't know, a period of six to eight months, finally broke his silence and started airing dirty laundry again, which we will be covering on This Week in Turkey this week. But please continue. <laughs> okay. And also, you know, it's 
for many of us, maybe this election is more than an election, because um, recently our um, parliamentarian system changed, with also, again, uh, with the voters' uh, consent, uh, but this change, uh, be- after this t- change, Turkey became much more autocratic and uh, a one-man rule, actually. Mm-hmm. It's going uh, worse in most of the census in in democratic uh, parameters, if you speak on that. So uh, many people are not happy. Also, the economics are yeah. terrible, as might our viewers know as uh, these things. And uh, so people are, I think, waiting for the day to vote. Yes. And it will be also uh, President Erdogan and his party, his colleagues, Uh, are looking, uh, they really want to keep their power mm-hmm. and position, so it will be important, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that uh, the AKP government, who has been in charge for the last 20 years in Turkey, for the folks at home who don't know... Yeah, there's they, a chance that they might lose. There's a chance that they might lose, but I don't think they're going to go quietly into that good night. I think they're going to put up a fight, but uh, for context... President Erdogan is pretty much losing to every potential candidate that he's facing in 2023. So this election is going to be a referendum on Erdogan. Just if you're, in case you're not very well informed, Turkey's economy has been basically collapsing and most people blame Erdogan. Sure, when you're the president, you get all of the blame, but this is different because President Erdogan has been adamant about reducing interest rates despite the lira crashing consecutively every time, single time he does it, right? So, Mehmet, you remember this. Like, we would be watching President Erdogan's speech in a period of time last year, and everybody would be waiting for the dollar to crash because every time he would speak, the dollar would crash. Sorry, the lira would crash. Yeah, crash. Dollar goes up. (laughs) Dollar goes up, right. So, that's why these elections matter, and that's why we're doing this, because... It's going to get a little wild in Turkey, and we'd like to be able to present objective reporting from this country in a language that everybody can understand, or most people can understand. So what will we be having on air? So Mehmet actually has a little bit of knowledge as to what we're going to be doing. Of course, we're going to be continuing our weekly show this week in Turkey, but it's going to be on the English channel. Mm -hmm. Mehmet, what else we got? We have many more stuff that awaits our uh, viewers. First of all, uh, I would like to say I'm not a journalist. Like you mentioned, I came out kicking and screaming. Yes, you did. It was hard getting him here. Excuse me, blushing constantly. Uh, I think we will cover news like Mediascope Turkish does. Uh, So if you're familiar with how we cover news, with integrity, with journalistic integrity, uh, inclusive democratic matter, uh, that, that you will find there. But... Besides that, we will also cover some global news mm-hmm. and also some cult- culture and art maybe from Istanbul. So if you have, like Murat mentioned in the intro, if you have no idea about Turkey, this could also be your channel to get to know Turkey, not just the news maybe, but the fabric of this country. I think it could help you as well. We will have shorts, we will have own field reporting, and of course our star, Murat and his TVT, because... That's what you're kept this train going. You're uh, making me you blush, made me blush the first time you brought me out. This is true. This is true. <laughs> he, he's, it, this is payback. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you you had it coming. Uh, what else? Maybe we could, in time, if we do a lot more and achieve our goals, we could just get a, maybe a few more reporters and then maybe we could cover from outside of Turkey. Mm-hmm. Who knows? The project is relatively young. And, and it's a... Very small team, we have to tell this uh, for now. Yeah. And it's very important that you like us, you uh, subscribe follow us, sub- subscribe our channel. We have Patreon that you can contribute. Yes. So it's very important for us. Uh, and in, yes. in a short time, we will also have our join bo- button. So when Fingers that crossed. comes up, please feel free to press that button. Yes, please consider buying me a cup of coffee because... <laughs> I really need a cup of coffee every morning. (laughs) All right, folks, do we have anything else to add? I think we should... uh, I have actually some names to drop. Oh, okay. Um, uh, As we started this project, us three 
had also two more people that uh, helped us a lot. First of all, sure. Senem, who's going through a awesome. problematic time in family right now. She's at a funeral. We wish her the best. Awesome. Also, John Setatajan, who's also an editor for us, who's been doing a great job. So we are relatively a young core. Uh, we have some people with great experience that shows us the way. And I think you will get your Turkish news from us in no time. Okay. I don't know why you were so resistant to coming on here. You did fantastic. <laughs> you have an on-air presence, and I demand you come on more. Yeah, I will. I agree. <laughs> The confidence is amazing. Love it. Well, that was a mouthful. Why don't we go to our guest, Ushun? Would you like to introduce her? Yes. Hi, Selin. Selin Pierre Magniani. Thank you very much for being with us today. Um, you have been a contributor to Mediascope. And you work as an independent journalist, mostly covering Turkey in France. Yes. yes. So I would like to ask you, um, what kind of problems, difficulties you face, uh, especially uh, when you cover Turkey, try to tell what's going on in Turkey, these politics, economics. I mean, uh, why do I ask this? Because I think in, as, the Turk, as the Turkish audience has problems uh, reaching to the news, right news, independent news, it might be the same for the uh, foreigners as well, English-speaking world, for example. Yes, sure. Well, it, it really depends on the political atmosphere. Like, uh, I've been here for 12 years now, and at the very beginning, it was quite uh, easy, at least, to talk with people. And uh, I think it's according also to the, poli uh, the polarization of the society. And as long as the society is polarized, like, people are quite reluctant to talk to foreign medias. Uh, in a way, I can understand, because uh, Turkish, like, at least, uh, especially, specifically, uh, the Western medias, Uh, they are like quite like uh, reluctant to talk to us. So for at, at least like five, six years, it's getting uh, hard actually to, to talk with people, especially like conservative uh, people. Even if you're trying really hard and uh, it takes a lot, very long time to uh, to make them comfortable with us. Uh, thanks. Uh, well, if, if you speak Turkish as a foreigner, it's of, of course, like obviously uh, easy, easier. Uh, but for other people, People and depends also uh, uh, like he, he, uh, as a French, for example. I think it's different. Like uh, it's different to be uh, coming from Germany. Different if you're coming from, uh, for example, Arabic countries. Uh, for, from sometimes we, we we work with, uh, for example, Japanese uh, journalists. So I think it's really depends on the as I told you, like the political atmosphere and like uh, the the nationality of the of the journalist. Selin, could I ask you also uh, regarding how much news you can get when you are, uh, for example, in Europe? Because uh, for, for English-speaking people, I mean, of course, you know Turkish, so you can uh, get it wherever you want, maybe. But um, because, you know, uh, the government-controlled newspapers has also all uh, English outlets, I mean, uh, news, uh, they have uh, making English news as well. Uh, yes. But independent media is not ha, does not have the means much to do the same. So how do you see how Turkey is represented uh, for English speaking world in that sense? Well, uh, since I, I'm reading Turkish, I, I don't really like uh, follow that closely like uh, English uh, pieces. And uh, I think, well, uh, if you if you really want to get the good news, I think uh, you always can risk. Because, like for example, uh, alternative media also, uh, like I'm, I'm thinking about, for example, BNet, or they're also like doing uh, like uh, pieces and articles in uh, in English. But it's obviously not enough. Uh, so I think like the Mediascope uh, initiative is a very good one. Uh, I know, for example, people who are following. Uh, Uh, the report of a uh, few few friends of us who started actually a newsletter, both in Turkish and in English. 
And a lot of people are following this later, especially, especially in, for example, among ambassadors and, uh, and all the administrative people coming from abroad. So I think it's really, really important to have, like, to, uh, to try to have other, uh, broadcasts in, in foreign languages and specifically in English, since so many people can, of course, uh, understand English. So, like, really, like, uh, congratulations to Mediascope for this initiative. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know what to say. I mean, we got our work cut out for us, but thank you very much for your kind words. I also agree that there is an insufficient uh, amount of news reporting in English from Turkey. But Selin, thank you so much for being able to join us and uh, your pearls of wisdom. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Bye. So this was a little short and sweet explainer on what Mediascope English was all about. We're going to be covering politics, economy, geopolitics, headlines. We will have everything from explainers to breaking news and everything in between. We will also be covering the world events, of course, but we are primarily your address if you'd like to hear objective reporting from a country that uh, might have global ramifications. So stay tuned. Uh, this is only the beginning. And if you wouldn't mind, give us a little head start here. Uh, give us a little maybe like and maybe a little bit of a subscribe here. Share our upcoming videos because we'll have a few gems in there for that matter. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.